Hi, my name is Carrie Seeline, and I'm a 2017 MA graduate from the Center of Jewish Studies at the GTU. I want to appreciate and thank Dina Aronoff and the Center for Jewish Studies for giving me the opportunity to talk to you for a few minutes about my life, uh, the current pandemic situation, and some reflections on old and new religious movements. So six months ago, I was diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer stage four, advanced metastatic. I was given six months to live if no treatment could be found. Uh, fortunately, I am participating in a clinical trial of a targeted DNA therapy, and my cancer is shrinking, no longer spreading. It's not remission, it won't cure me, but it gives me some more time, some time to prepare for olam haba, for the world that's coming, according to some Jewish mystical uh, thought, the world that is, in a way, already, always here. This world for me is about my death, but in fact, everyone faces death, including our planet is facing death. I was having symptoms last summer, last fall, coughing and shortness of breath. It wasn't coronavirus, it was cancer. Now, everybody is concerned about coughing and shortness of breath. I stay home because I'm immune compromised. People are all staying home or limiting going out because of their own concerns about their own immune system and those of their loved ones and their friends. I have to say, being inside has blurred the difference between inside and outside. I spend a lot of time on Zoom. I talk with people all the time that I haven't really had the opportunity to be deeply connected with in a long time. And because we're not working outside our home necessarily or distracted with other kinds of uh, issues, we're able to find a new form of intimacy in a time that's otherwise rather alienating and very frightening because we don't know what is coming. We don't know what the olam haba brings to us, except we do know one thing. It's going to bring death to us all. So many people have reached out to me in so much love and support and kindness, prayers, offers of help, offers of assistance. It's a very, very beautiful thing that has brought me closer to people that I was already close to, but has also connected me with people all around the world that I didn't know before this at all, and has created new opportunities for intimacy and for connection in a way that is beyond that of the flesh and the blood. So I would say that the world to come is a world that opens us up to new possibilities of intimacy. As well as a Jew, I'm a practitioner of Thelema, a new religious movement that was founded in the early 20th century by Aleister Crowley, and that proposes that we are all divinities and we are all magicians who can learn to transform ourselves, our natures, and the world around us through intentional acts of love under will, which is a Kabbalistic concept of chesed, moving through the tree of life through gevurah, chesed being unlimited love and compassion, and gevurah being a constriction, think of it like a fire hose that would siphon water out of a huge lake and make it into a productive and flowing stream. According to magic, Sefer Yetzira, an ancient Jewish text that is highly inform, uh, informative in the Thelemic tradition, we have the ability to stop time and to shape it anew into the world to come, the world that's already coming, Olam Haba, the world that's in fact always already here, if we can only stop time ourselves and notice it. Through these intimate connections that I have been forming with people all over the world, I realize that um, my community, even if I can't meet with them face to face, we can go anywhere we want to sitting right here in my living room. We can talk about the things that are so important to us, our love, our connection, our politics, our freedom, our faith. This intimacy can replace anxiety. This intimacy makes us see that we're all in the same boat, whether it's cancer or coronavirus or any other chronic health condition or limiting condition 
or condition that keeps us from connecting deeply with ourselves and with our uh, and with each other. In his essay, The Coming Community, the philosopher Giorgio Gambin tells a story that was also told by Walter Benjamin, Ernest Bloch, and Gershom Sholem. This is the story of the Olam Haba, the world to come, he says, just like this world, the world we live in right now. We're sitting around our dining room table. The tea kettle is boiling on the stove over there. The cat is sleeping on the cushion on the chair over there. The children are doing their homework, reading books. The old people, grandpa smoking his pipe, grandma's drinking a glass of latte. The world to come is the world we live in right now, except there's just something a little different. What's this difference? This difference is the difference that we bring to this, the awareness, our use of our time, our use of our attention, our use of the intimacy that connects us one to each other, even in a time, especially in a time of great uncertainty, of great anxiety, of the fear of death, which, after all, comes to us all. I bless you with health. I bless you with life. I bless you with intimate, loving connections and a sense that the world to come is the world already here, and that you can make that little bit of difference that can't even be articulated, but you feel it, you know it when it happens, and that it creates a condition that liberates us from a constricted place of slavery, of the clock, of work, of demands that don't really need our time and free us up for the essential things, for the flat, wide open spaces of a wilderness. It's not exodus. It's the place where we can create our ideal communities of caring, of respect, of worshipful concern for each other and for ourselves. I bless you with all the blessings of Olam Habah.